All right, Emmanuel Ibadji Yafi has joined me with business news. Good evening to you, Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. How are you? I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Doing? All right, I'm not bad at all. All right. Good yeah. to see you again. Yeah, you look good, good in your suit. Thank you. <laughs> okay, you take it over. All right, thanks. Now, public policy think tank Institute of Fiscal Studies is warning that Ghana's program with the IMF could face some serious challenges. This was contained in the institution's evaluation of Ghana's program with the fund so far. The institution maintains that the targets set under the program might make it difficult for the March talked about economic stability to be achieved very soon. It is also worried that meeting some of the conditions, especially in an election year, might be difficult. As far as the quantitative criteria are concerned, I mean numbers about you know the deficit, uh, how about Bank of Ghana is financing uh, international reserves. So those are the quantitative issues. Those ones they've t t told us that uh, the, the government has virtually met met them all. You know, but when it comes to the structural performance criteria, that is where maybe there may be issues. As you mentioned, the Bank of Ghana Act, and I have to go back. We have to go back to the program to see exactly when it is supposed to have been uh, enacted, to be able to know whether they have uh, breached it. I, 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 I don't remember exactly what, what the timetable is for that. But So the Bank of Ghana Act and maybe other uh, performance, other structural reforms that they are supposed to have undertaken, until the review comes out, we, we don't have inside information to be able to know exactly what has been done and what has not been done. Because, of course, things like the Bank of Ghana Act, we all know it's not been done. Okay? But maybe there are other things that it is the staff. The staff came here and conducted their own review. So they will know what has been done, what has not been done. Authorities of textile printing company Printex Limited have declared that there might be some staff reduction soon because of the conditions prevailing in the local industry. The thing is that we have studios and we have designers that we train. So they generate the designs. But unfortunately for us, it is these moving designs, you see, that they pirate. So if you are lucky on your first, second, third visit, to the market, then your design is already there. Now with technology, what they need is only to have the picture sent there. And they have the, uh, their technology is superior than ours. So the only time frame that you have is how they transport the finished product from China to Ghana. Then that design kiss it goodbye. It is our workers who inform us that they want to go on demonstration. And that is premised on the fact that as we speak, even today, if you are not careful, the orders that we had for the week will, 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 will peter out or it will end. So they will be redundant from tomorrow to Friday. Because now we are keeping the SS labor on our back, hoping things will improve. If nothing happens, it will get to a state. No employer can be able to do it, not even government. We easily, I can, on top of my say that maybe 100 people will go from our four, 500. The business of fueling shipping vessels, also known as bunkering, is said to be a multi-million dollar industry within the sub-region. Unfortunately, high taxes and limited facilities have curtailed Ghana's ability to take advantage of this growing industry. Ghana is currently utilizing only 20% of its bunkering potential. Speaking to Joy Business after the launch of a two-day Oil and Shipping Africa conference to deliberate on the petroleum industry in Africa and international shipping and bunkering issues, the managing director of Ghana Oil Company Limited, Patrick Akoli, said Goyle is ready to lead the drive to expand bunkering facilities in Ghana and asked government to take a look at taxes on bunkering services. Uh, in Ghana, we are not doing much as far as bunkering is concerned. Because of, uh, for now, the taxes on the, on the, uh, uh, on MGU, you know, about almost 80 percent of bunkering business is done offshore and uh, not that the ships will willingly want to bunker offshore but because of one or two reasons like i said mgo is an international commodity and they deal with the plots so if uh, the price 
locally or at the, at the airports are higher than the plus offshore, uh, sorry, the prices offshore. They of, of course want to go offshore, but because of pirate activities along the West African sub-region, they would have wanted to come to secure the environment. So we are happy that uh, our harbors are being expanded, especially Tema Harbor, where we also have a facility. In fact, we have a Ghana banking services at the fishing harbor, Goel, together with Total. Goel owns about 51% and Total 49%. We are rehabilitating our tanks over there. So if uh, Tema Harbor is rehabilitated and uh, Chakradi Harbor too is rehabilitated, then we are sure that at least 30 to 40 percent of the banking business will come on shore. So as far as we in Goyal are concerned, we are ready for the market because we believe it's a very big market and it can as, what, uh, bring in a lot of revenue to uh, what, not only the company but to the, the country. Away from that, some players in the automobile industry are pressing for stronger regulations to deepen growth in the sector. According to the CEO of Silver Star Auto Limited, Nohar Kalamoni, it has become crucial for government to deepen more regulatory measures in the importation of vehicles into the country. He spoke to Joy Business at the launch of the new Mercedes-Benz E-Class in Accra. You know, there's no limits on who can import what. And uh, for us as distributors, you're investing in uh, showrooms, you, you do events like this, uh, you're investing in infrastructure for after sales, uh, and these guys come and they just rely on one-off uh, imports to sell, uh, you know, one car here and there. Sometimes uh, because they have no overheads and uh, no investments, literally they are making more profit selling a car than we are, which is uh, kind of sad. And uh, at the end of the day, we end up having to take care of these cars uh, when they have a problem. <laughs> they could by imposing uh, much uh, stricter laws on the imports of vehicles. Basically, you know, we have an association of uh, the Ghana Automobile Distributors Association, and all the members, uh, not e even not all the importers are members. So all the genuine members should be part of this association first uh, and foremost. And the association with the government should be able to put uh, measures to make sure that if you don't belong to this association and then you represent these brands, anybody who is importing is basically competing against your business and uh, basically jeopardizing the investment that you are making. Because really that's what uh, the gray market, market is doing, is jeopardizing all the investments that we are doing. All right, so time now to go to the stock market and John is here ready to give us an update. Go John, good evening. Good evening, Emmanuel. Now, has the Brexit had it taken it easy, a little easy on Ghana? Exactly. We are seeing some signals of a recovery on most of the market, especially the international commodities market, basically. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're seeing some um, pacing out of the various commodities on the international market. We get right. there. But the Ghana stock, I said, after last week's performance, so like it's taking it easy this particular week because um, a total of about 124,922 actually traded in terms of volume at a value of 94,000. 988. That's quite um, on the low side compared to what we witnessed last week, over millions and five millions thereabout. But that affected the market capitalization to about 54,788.65 million Ghana cities. So continuously or continually, the market cap or the price of the Ghana stock exchange keeps going down, basically. So maybe over time, you can organize yourself and probably go in there sure, and sure. then buy almost all the 32 listed, 35 <laughs> listed, like it is on the market, good. basically. It is there. And then the, the Compost Index, which measures the total performance of the market, also so declined marginally from 10.39 um, to almost about 10.42. So we see some decline in there, and then the financial index, which also records or the, yeah, monitors the performance of the financial, the financial equities listed on the exchange, also declined as marginally to almost about 13.44 uh, um, from 13.41. That's exactly how the summary of the market is. But today we saw only one equity moving the market today. That's EGL. Um, it lost. actually lost two pursuers and will open tomorrow at two Ghana cities, 42 pesos, 
per share. So for those of you who are interested in buying EGL shares, I think it's actually gone down a bit. You can buy it very cheap and probably sell very so, high. So that, wait a minute. Um, so that, that was the only equity that moved the market. It, what, what does what, it mean, actually? It means that it doesn't... It's not that it doesn't mean that that's the only market that equity that traded. A lot of equities might have traded today, but the point is, it is the only equity or the only share which, on the average, exceeded the average okay. mark. Okay. That's exactly what it means. All right. Basically. Okay. So, so that's exactly what it is. And on the international market, crude oil, you can see it's picking from uh, mm -hmm. some recovery activities or signals of recovery activities there. That's just to the fact that investors are now realizing that Brexit is a reality and therefore they need to sort of like uh, balance out some of these things. And also gold also gained about 11.06 per ounce. That's quite significant. A very impressive performance there. Almost about 84 basis point in there. That is it. So gold keeps gaining. And then cocoa gained 30. You know for the past three weeks, cocoa has been losing. Sometimes mm. $100, 45 50 and all. But think since Brexit, they've been gaining some value over the period. So okay. cocoa is not that much affected. So Unless Brexit could be a blessing in disguise to us. It could be a blessing in disguise, meaning that nowhere came by gaining some mm. value in there. But then we should be very careful in the event they decide to sort of like restructure their mm. economies will be found wanting. But then, domestically, the city not do well at all. After gaining marginally to the British pound, we thought that Brexit would take, give uh, the city some advantage mm -hmm. for some time to come. It couldn't really take that so advantage. Late very very short lived so today the city lost to the u.s dollar lost to the british pound lost to the euro lost to the chinese one only gained against the cfa franc that's our francophone partners here in west africa so that's exactly how the market behaves so for tomorrow the market the city uh, the commodity market, sorry the currency market would open at against the dollar would open at three ghana cities 92 the, the the pound would open tomorrow at five ghana cities 21 the euro four ghana cities 33 and then the chinese yuan 58 per swiss per for for one but then for the cfa franc you need 151 cfa franc to get yourself one ghana cities for that matter so that's okay. exactly how it is this, uh, the ghana the, the city as a currency is All not right. really taking advantage of the, the, the environment in, in the UK and so, in Europe, basically. Thank you so very that's much, how it John. is. That's the market. Thank demand. you so much for the update. That was John Amako. Uh, join John again tomorrow for more business news updates on the marketplace and, of course, with me again on Business Life. My name is Imano Abwajiri. If you have more news coming up, don't go away.